Hello, welcome to part two of Endure the King. Let's continue. This question is, what would my life be without YouTube? For me, it would probably be drawing and playing vid games and interacting on Twitter and, you know, doing whatever I do. So there you go. That's that's my life. <laughs> All right. So first question comes from Pocho Max, and he says, what do you think your life would be like if YouTube never existed? Oops. Well, here's the, the deal. I mean, you got to think about what was my life like before I ever did anything on YouTube. Um, I was working um, at a company called HSI. It was an office job. Uh, I was working, you know, anywhere from around, I think it was like between 7 8 a.m. till like 5, 6 p.m. every single day. Coming home, tired, feeling unappreciated, honestly, from my job, underutilized in a lot of cases. Um, and... Uh, you know, I was definitely underpaid for what I was doing. I was doing continuous improvement work, basically doing the work of someone who was supposed to be getting paid like twenty, thirty thousand dollars more than what I was getting paid, and they basically used me to do this work, even though they knew that that was messed up, and they refused to promote me or give me the pay that was owed for the work I was doing. I was getting what? paid as a customer service rep and doing the work of someone who's like two, three pay grades above me. I know because guess what? My dad had that same job and was getting paid way more than me. So there you have it. Um, maybe they didn't pay you as much because they didn't want because they didn't want the Burnell family to to make a lot of money. I I don't know, but you know, whatever. Yeah, I w it was not a good time. You know, at that point in my life, I was not very happy with what I was doing. It actually wasn't until I started doing YouTube and seeing that I was getting popularity for having fun and doing silly stuff on the internet that I actually started to have almost a turnaround in my life. But um, but he's not asking what you did in the past. Just just say what you would do without YouTube. Just just do that. More than likely, what would have happened was I would have gotten laid off just like I did. Even though I, you know, even though I, even if I wasn't doing YouTube, I probably still would have gotten laid off like I was in late 2010. I probably would have had to scurry to find another job, and more than likely, I probably would not have found another job that would have paid me as much as I was making at that time. Um, I don't know. Maybe I would have had to lose my condo. In Connecticut, because I wouldn't have been able to pay the, the payments on it. Um, maybe uh, I would have had to work two, three part-time jobs just to make ends meet. I mean, it's hard to say. Because the bottom line is, I was already in a lot of debt at that point. I had debt from my past, my previous jobs and, and things that I had done. You know, it's funny because I talk about when I, I used to play competitive Street Fighter, sometimes in, in a good way and sometimes in a bad way. In a lot of ways... It put me in the debt because I was using credit cards to finance those trips. And then I had all this credit card debt that was like racked up because I had gone to Evo several times and traveled the country doing all this stuff. And it wasn't exactly the best idea. So, water. you know, I don't know. It's, it's pretty uh. much impossible to say. But more than likely, there I never... Here's the deal. I can tell you what wouldn't have happened. I would not ever have left Connecticut because I wouldn't have been able to afford to a move. I just wouldn't have been able to be able to move to another place. I always wanted to leave Connecticut because I did not like that state. Didn't like the weather. Didn't like how expensive it was to live there. Didn't really like the people there either, honestly. I mean, some people, yes. My family, yes. But honestly, I never really felt like I was at home in Connecticut. I always the people in Connecticut aren't that bad. I mean, come on. Come on. Do I look such a bad guy, guys? Come on. Like I was out of place, a sore, <laughs> out like a sore thumb, right? Um, and I always wanted to leave. I doubt I ever would have been able to. I still would have been stuck there. I probably would have been, even though I'm in a really bad financial position now, at least I still have prospects of making money. Imagine if I had the debts that I had back then and I had no out and I had no way. Even working two, three part-time jobs probably wouldn't have even been enough to make what I was making at that office job. Literally, I could have been in a worse off position than I am now, like seven years ago. That's a scary fucking thought. Scary. It really is. At least now I have positivity. I have a job that I love. I have people coming out to support me. There's ways. There's There are. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Back then, there w wouldn't have been, I think, if I didn't have YouTube, right? Um, I wouldn't have never met my fiance. Never. How would I have gotten in contact with, with a girl who lives in, in you know Pennsylvania? Um, I would never would have. It would but you you did oh oh well, no I guess through YouTube I guess it happened never right? mind I don't know what I ever have have even you know think about it the dating scene someone who just lost their job is literally in fi big financial trouble 
uh, because they don't, they're not making enough money to even pay for their condo. How do you think I would be able to find a, a girlfriend back then? You know what I mean? So I was pretty much going to shout yeah. up Shit's Creek <laughs> right now. If there was no YouTube, I would have been up Shit's Creek. So in a lot of ways, even though YouTube literally has destroyed my business and done all these changes to their fucking formula of what they well, like, who go when you go to when you date, or who goes like, hey, honey, I hey, uh, you know, I have a lot of debt, dude. Like, <laughs> what? You know, it's not like you don't have to like. The person doesn't have to find out. You know, it's not like you're gonna tell your girlfriend about your fucking financial. Uh, information or anything. Come on. Business that have, uh, I mean, I guess like, unless it, is it, you're at the point where you can't afford to go out, then why would you go out anyway? Successful and then tank because of that. <laughs> um, that initial <laughs> success allowed me to do a lot of things in my life that are incredibly positive. And listen, there's a lot of times I know that I end up talking about my finances, that I end up talking about the negative shit that happens to me. The bottom line is I've had so much positivity over the years because of YouTube, because of yeah, streaming, okay. because of everything, because of you. Positivity, I, yep. know, I, Even <laughs> with the negative, I know it's terrible, you know, some of the horrible things that have happened to me, but there's been a lot of high highs, too. It's been a while since I've had a high high. I'm waiting. Hopefully, there's one coming because there's been a while since I had one, but there's been a lot of amazing experiences that I've had, and I wouldn't give it up. All right? Yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. From Ono so, 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 if I came around to, to your fucking house, Phil, and said, Phil, I, I'll give you all of my money. I'll give you a life... life long money in exchange you don't make youtube videos anymore he's gonna fucking take the money <laughs> yeah yeah okay he's, he's he's gonna he's gonna be like no no i want to do youtube forever keep your money theo no no he would take that that uh fucking he says deal. phil at the end of the year would you ever do a ko gaming community creations tournament for a funniest moments of the year montage you could go something like this make it so the montages have to be five minutes or long uh, five minutes long at most oh upload this all is the submissions this. in one video and put up a poll in the said video's description make a second video show i'm not gonna answer this because i don't i'm not ko gaming creations work for you this year um <clears throat> listen that's a great idea. And the bottom line is... Great idea. I say the bottom line a lot. I don't know why. It's just a mannerism of mine that I say a lot. Um, excuse me. Burp, burp, burp. The community creations were working really well in the month of February when I introduced them to KO Gaming. Then YouTube ad revenue plummeted and I was unable to focus on making a lot of videos for KO Gaming because I basically had to find a way to keep things alive and pay my bills, which meant more streaming, increased streaming, interactive streaming, which then basically took my focus away from those videos. And... I know there were some people who were working on community creations for me, and sadly, a lot of them, I haven't heard from them, because I think what happened is they saw, oh, well, Phil has to focus on this other thing now, so why am I going to bother? I'm... St See what I mean? He fucking killed KO Gaming himself. I'm still looking for community creations for KO Gaming. I'm still Gaming. looking if for them. If you want to do a montage of a playthrough I'm doing, if you want to do a this is how you don't play of a playthrough I've done, whatever you want, I'm looking for those. The bottom line is I only have like three left, and they're all from the same guy, so I don't want to constantly release the same type of video from the same person on that channel, because <laughs> then it stagnates, then it's only that. It stagnates, but but you fucking dummy, just upload one that might... You know, it's by other people to send you more. Not uploading any is not gonna, like, have people send you more. People thought KO Gaming was dead because, um, Cock was dead because you didn't upload anything for Cock. Come on. Right? Uh, if there's more people who want to do submissions for KO Gaming, by all means, please do. Come on. You know, it's the same process. Email me at darksidephil at hotmail.com. We'll discuss what kind of thing you're working on. I'll let you know what I think. And then you can send it to me, and I'll take a look at it. I'll give you suggestions, and eventually, hopefully, we can get it up there, okay? Take a sip to the water. In regards to Ono Rope's suggestion of funniest moments, the reason I selected this is question. Because here we are in late April of 2017, folks. Yeah, yeah, he, he chose this question not because he wants to answer this, his fans' question. He chose it for a very for a business reason. Things are not going well in regards to the forums and the way that people used to use them. And let me explain. Basically, what people would do... I don't know what's going on outside. Great, uh, great soundproofing, Phil. Now there's police out there. First there was a helicopter, now there's police. Um, and by the way, it's not me. No, I'm not getting swatted. And there's a fire... And, um, and there was a fucking fire engine. I heard him. I heard the fire engine. It used to be <laughs> that people would go to the forums whenever there was something really funny going on or oh, the fucking or forums. whatever, and they would nominate it. There's a thread on the forums right now, nominations for the funniest moments of 2017. 
and these people would go there and nominate the stuff. And at the end of the year, say around November and December-ish, I would take all those nominations, I would sort them into, oh, these are the best ones, and I would make polls on the forums where people vote on the funniest moments, and then I would make <clears> my <throat> funniest moments countdown series, okay? That's what I've done every single year since I started YouTube. This year, the, the thread was made, and in January, people were posting up. And then, of course, I got all caught up with trying to save my business and keep things afloat, so I really haven't been utilizing the forums that much recently or even mentioning them. Just recently, I went over there. There hasn't been a nomination for a funniest moment since January. So you're telling me, with all the playthroughs I did in February, March, and April, nothing funny happened? I mean, I can tell you right now, just... <laughs> Nothing funny happened. Yeah, because maybe you're not funny, Phil, but I'm more willing to believe that these people that maybe, just maybe, hear me out, guys. This is gonna be fucking insane. Your mind's gonna blow. What if people are just waiting for the end of the year to start nominating? The Mass Effect Andromeda playthrough, the bugs and shit that were going on in that playthrough. There were some nights where it was a laugh riot. Because a within laugh hour, riot. Because fucking bugs would happen that were hilarious, but no one's nominated anything. And here's the, the, the truth of the matter, folks. At the end of this year, I'm not going to have time to go through the thousands of videos that I've uploaded to YouTube and find the funniest moments myself. I'm just not going to have time. You don't have to go through all of them, though, Phil. You can just pick the ones from your memory. Like, it could be, like, the most recent ones. I don't, I don't know. So, uh, that's why that series has always relied on the viewers, okay? Ono Rub's suggestion may work. Because since may now work. we're already three months behind, unless there's a miraculous recovery and people head over to the forums right now and start posting up their funny moments, I get the feeling that this series isn't going to happen this year. But... Maybe what I can do at the end of the year, I can say, folks, now is the time. Make a funny moments montage. Now is the time. Stuff that I've done this year. And we can have people make these montages and submit them to me. And maybe what I could do is, like he says, do a competition where people can vote on which one they think is the best. And at the end of the year, have a winner announced or whatever. That could be cool. I'd be okay with that, you know. But, that again, that relies on user-created content. And right now, everything's kind of dried up. Ever since the announcement that YouTube ad revenue was down... And I have a less focus on edited style content because of that. There really hasn't been a lot of activity around it. So if you're interested in either nominating funny moments, then go to the kingofhate.com forums. And right there, I believe it's either in the playthrough section or the general section. Oh. There's already a thread for it. God Please, damn. by all means, nominate your nominees for funny moments that have happened this year. Okay? Please. If Do my work for me. you're interested in that, but maybe you want to make a video for KO Gaming. Whether it's a montage, a funny montage of a game that I've played recently. If it's a this is how you don't play style video making fun of me. Whatever it is. Email me at darksidefillahotmail.com. Give me your... But I thought that was cyberbullying. Wow. Wow, he's bullying himself. That, that's sad. Idea. I'll let you know what I think and we'll go from there. All right? Um, but yeah, this idea for yeah. year end, maybe people doing funny montages of the best stuff of the year at the year end and having a competition between them, maybe that's the way to go. It sounds like a good idea to me, but again, it's, it relies on the viewers. To yeah, it sounds like a good idea happen. for my fans to do my videos. It's up to you guys to go and do the work. On. Next question is from Richter Tryhard, and he says, Richter! Hi, Phil. So, you're known as the king of hate because you use that hate against you as fuel. Oh, my God, Richter. Richter! However, it's sadly commonly misunderstood as a person who hates anything far too often. I'm guilty of this myself. But that's the fucking... Dude, I, I don't believe the whole, oh, I use the hate to make me stronger. No, 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 no. He, he, I, I, he knows why he picked king of hate because... It, it, because it's cool to hate things. It's not like... But let's see his question. Let's see his question. Would I ever consider ditching the King of Hate moniker because so many uh, so many think it means something it doesn't? Uh, to me, honestly, if I were Phil, would I, would, would I ditch that name? Uh... Mm. I don't know. I don't know, actually, because, like, I, I, because it, the thing with, like, KO Gaming, DSP Gaming, like, at least that has some connectivity to it because of the gaming part, but the King of Hate Vlogs kind of stands out. I, I, I probably would have changed it to be DSP Vlogs because that, that way it's more connected to his channels more, and, and it, and it, like, kind of has a, you know it, it 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 looks nicer like you know if theo does videos because because i'm making videos on that channel and this was just theo videos because it's me and videos it's it's and and 
The, the, the title of this channel, Theo Videos, is supposed to be simple because these, these videos are very fucking simple. If this was, like, you know, Theo does videos, I mean, I guess I could uh, say that that's as simple, but it... it I don't know. I, I, I like that name. I liked it better than the original name I had for that channel, so I changed it. My The original name was, like, Raven's Guy 2007, which was a fucking dumbass name. But, um... Uh, this, I liked, I liked more. Theo does videos. Theo videos, you know... But that way it has some unity. I'm not saying like, oh, Theo Videos is a completely separate channel from this from this channel. It's like, no, Theo Videos has its own like direction it's going, and Theo Does Videos is for is for more original uh, creations that I'm working on. And that, that that's that's why it's like that. But yeah, with him I, I would change it to DSP vlogs, if anything. But um Yeah, I mean I I'm not I'm not here. I'm not either. I wouldn't be either way with it though. Like if he wants to change it, he wants to change it. I, I don't think it's like he has to change it to save the business or anything. As well, and I'm, and I've met some viewers that thought it was related to racism in some way. My question is, would you ever consider a new title? If so, what would you call yourself? I remember originally thinking KO Gaming was stand, stood for King of Gaming, but now that I see that the O is capitalized. I think that it must mean Knockout Gaming. I don't know what title it could be if you officially changed it, but I imagine something that is more in tune with who you are as a person as well as your content. Maybe something like the Realist King or the Raw King Gamer, of Gaming. That okay. one makes me lol a bit. Richter, lol come on. Uh, you come can on. start a fan suggested poll come if you on, want Richter. to change it. Just a thought. Thank <laughs> you for the videos. I wish you luck. Richter has an incredibly pertinent point, folks. Very pertinent. Again, and I'll say I actually said this in part one, and I'll say it again. <laughs> Some people are so either lazy or stupid. Yeah, or that's stupid. Not an insult. That's just the commonality of people. What? Not an insult. Okay, so like, I want you guys to go up to Phil and say, "Wow, Phil, Phil is really stupid," and see what happens. You know, go to his Twitch chat, say, "Wow, Phil, you're really dumb," or "Wow, Phil, you're really stupid," or something, and and see how long you will last with your free speech on that on that in that chat. <laughs> Oh. I'm lazy or stupid. What the too, fuck? So what was that lazy. about? But typically, people are lazy what? or stupid, and when they hear something, <laughs> the they don't actually do. The There's a desync. There's a fucking desync. Oh my god! What a professional. And muted for a second, and now the audio is desynced from the video. Jesus, Jesus. What it means? They just fabricate something, or they go with common opinion, or whatever someone says that sounds more dramatic or negative. My King of Hate moniker comes from the fact that over the course of my life, whether it was high school, whether it was the competitive Street Fighter community, whether now it's on YouTube, that people who don't like me make all this shit up about me and say all this nasty stuff, and I take all their negativity and I use it as a way to fuel my desire oh. to be successful. Oh, fucking bullshit. Bullshit. I doubt people back in like 2008 or whenever he started doing YouTube, people were making these kind of vids. I fucking doubt that. If I didn't have that, right, I would have quit a long fucking time ago. I never would have been good at Street Fighter. I never would have gone to Evo and placed and won tournaments, you know, Evo qualifiers and all of that. I would have given up right away because right off the bat, people just talk shit about me constantly and said that I sucked and I had no no right to be in tournaments because I'm not good. I'll never be good. And then I ended up being good because I used that to fuel myself and as motivation to prove them wrong. Same thing on YouTube, right? To prove How many them wrong. People over the years, Phil doesn't do the right kind of video. Phil doesn't, you know what I mean? All the shit that people say about me and I use that as a fuel to prove that if you have the drive to do it, you could still be successful. And where'd that lead? You're you, you're out of machinima. You're you don't do vlogs anymore. That you know you uh, don't really change. You don't pull in a lot of viewers anymore. But yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, fine. right now things are financially tight and really in a in a risky position. I'm still fucking here. I'm still making videos. I'm still doing this as a, as a living. I hope I could keep doing it. But right now I'm still. I mean. Eight years fucking later, I'm still making videos, and six years later, I'm still doing it for a living. So obviously, I've done that. I use that motivation, all that hate against me, to master it and become better at what I to do. Become my own master, right? dude. Um, but there, are lazy or stupid people. The king of hate, hate. That means that he's a racist because he hates on people. And then they'll make again, like I said in the part one, they'll make a montage of the twelve times that I made racial humor out of context, so it's not funny, but it looks more like I'm a racist, right? Or if the joke was funny, it would it would still be funny even if I took that joke out of the playthrough. Again, like if I if I 
just played a random South Park clip that happened to have racial humor. Are you guys gonna say, Wow, guys, South Park is fucking racist. No, no, because most of the chances are it's gonna be funny because South Park is written by, you know, a group of people. They edit their jokes, they look at their jokes, and, you know, when it airs, it, it goes through standards and practices. And if, if something is really offensive, they would tell them, okay, this needs to be changed. Like, look at their 200 or 400 episode, one of those two, one of those episodes, uh, where they were going to have this whole thing about Muhammad, and then it got, it got censored uh, because of that. Now, like, because, because they, they you know, they're like, okay, we, we can't, we can't really do this because that might offend people, so we, we might have to pull back a little bit. So they pulled it back. They didn't sit there like, oh, you fucking censors, and no one sat there and said South Park was racist or anything, because they're not. But their jokes go through standards and practices, like every other joke, if it was something that was generally offensive, they would probably get a note back saying, this needs to change. And and that's what goes on. Like, Phil has, doesn't think about, like, okay, these jo this joke might come off, so I should really think about the joke to make it more uh, you know, hilarious or something, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't work. So, like, the joke cannot stand on its own, and that's why people take it the wrong way, because it's it's easier to take a joke that's not funny the wrong way than a joke that is funny. King of Hate, and this, is, this one is one that I've actually heard a lot from other YouTubers who talk shit about me who literally don't know a damned thing about me. Oh, Dark Side Phil, that's that asshole who just plays games and insults the game developers all day, because that's he's the king of hate and just hates on games. That's his gimmick. But you, you shut it on Atlas, Nintendo, Nite Nintendo is the big one! They're all of March, he fucking shit on Nintendo. Every time he talks about Nintendo, he has to shit on them. He has to. It's like a, uh, a, a thing with him. It's like a, it's like a little nagging thing in his brain that's like, oh, I'm saying, I'm talking about Nintendo? Okay, I need, I need to shit on them. Uh, he shits on Atlas. He shat on, uh, Platonic, uh, for ukulele. He called them moronic, or whatever. Uh, he shits on Kojima, he shits on Konami, he shits on Capcom, he shits on, uh, you know, every fucking developer that he, that he plays from software, um, Team Ninja, Square Enix, um, I, I don't think he shits on, on, uh, on, on Rockstar, but he might have, uh, but Bioware, he shot Bioware recently, uh, EA probably, I mean, he shits on so many developers! You can't tell me he doesn't. No. I don't support that. I think that he shouldn't be able to make a living doing that because that's horrible and it hurts game developers and it makes everyone look bad. But who says that, though? A lot of people shun developers. I don't think people who hate Konami or hate Kojima or hate whatever should not be able to make money. I don't give a shit about that that much. But, like, it matters when you're trying to say, oh, I'm a biased person. I, I'm very fair. And then, oh, fuck you, Nintendo. Let me throw my Wii U in the trash. Thing, yada yada yada. That's not what I do. That is That's what you do. Oh, <laughs> only if you're stupid enough to watch one of these negative montages about me and actually think that that's the whole picture. Would you think? Okay, that okay. Look, look. I, no one is saying you shut on developers nonstop, twenty four seven a day, er, every minute of every second of your playthroughs or anything like that. No one is saying that. But when you talk about a developer, you do shit on them multiple times. No one thinks that you do. Like, you know, forever or whatever, but... Uh, I... But some people aren't smart. And I hate to say it, there's a lot of big YouTubers out there, oh, who talk shit about me over the years. They ain't so smart either. They're all fucking luck, right? They followed the formulas of success on YouTube, or they did this oh, one okay. thing that somehow virally caught on, and that's their claim to fame. They didn't actually have anything intelligent that made them become popular. Phil, you're bullying these other YouTubers. Uh, I think you should stop. You're bullying them. You're bullying them. They were lucky assholes. <laughs> and then, all of a sudden, when they need to get a rise out of someone, they insult someone that they don't know, like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. You know, yeah, because Alpha Omega Sin is struggling with viewers, so that's why he brought up DSP because he's struggling to get viewers. Okay. Anything about them and knows nothing about them. Hey, take a sip. Uh, but I get, and I guess in a way, if you're gonna say, well, Theo, you you mentioned DSP for views, yeah, because you know, 500 views, 500 subs on a channel means I'm fucking popular, right, guys? I must be the most. I'm a huge YouTuber now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's hilarious that people think that King of Hate 
means that I'm a horrible person uh. that constantly hates on people and game developers. When it, literally, if you've watched... Dude, I, I just love that he's not even answering the question. The question is like, what do you change the name of your channel? I don't hate things. I don't. I, I Oh my God, people are so dumb. One hundredth. 1,000 oh my of my like 43,000 gameplay videos on DSP Games. Get to the point. You've probably seen maybe a couple instances of that, but it's one thing in context of a giant playthrough. It's not all I do in my fucking videos. Oh okay? my god. It's preposterous, and it's just ridiculous at this point. But the bottom line is you're right. The bottom there, line. There's no way you can really solve that. There's no way you can control that. When people are stupid and ignorant and they just want to be lazy and not do the re five seconds of research to find out what the King of Hate moniker means, they're going to spin it into something negative. You're absolutely right. The problem here is that sadly, over the years, I've wrapped myself up in that moniker so many times, it's be hard to disassociate myself from it. For example, this channel is called the King of Hate Vlogs. I can't rename or change the channel. No matter what, that's the channel. So this is where people know to go for vlogs. Sure, I can make a new vlogging channel. Yeah, you can! You can change the fucking name! I did it! My YouTube channel name was Raven's Guy 2007 And then I changed it to Electro Idiot. Then I changed it to Theo Does Videos. Because Theo Does Videos sounds a lot better than those two names. I was able to change it three times! Oh my god. And overnight, half my viewership would go away because it's almost impossible to get people to go to something new on YouTube. I've learned this many times over the years when I tried to migrate one group of viewers to another area. It's like pulling teeth. They just don't listen. A lot of people go away for a while. They come back and then they realize what happened here. They'll see it. Let's, for example, let's say I made a new channel. So whatever vlogs, okay? I like how he, just, he isn't going to use the example of KO Gaming because he migrated his reviews to that channel. He could have just said, yeah, like, you know, when I opened KO Gaming... People had a hard time under, uh, you know, uh, going finding out where the reviews were going or whatever. But no, no, he has to make a whole new example. It has nothing to do with with the King of Hate moniker. People would th wouldn't know it's me, or they'd see that this channel doesn't have new videos. They'd unsubscribe and never check it out again. That's the problem. The other thing is my website, thekingofhate.com, has had that that domain for how long? You know, I've had that website shit since uh, 2010, if not earlier. So it's another thing, another staple thing that's associated with me that that's called that. And, you know, uh, what do I do? How do I, I, I can't change a whole new, web, make a whole new website, right? Um, and the bottom line is, sadly, I hate to say it, even when I do initiatives that have nothing to do with the King of Hate moniker, like KO Gaming in particular, completely different name, has nothing whatsoever to do with King of Hate at all, right? Guess what? Those people who don't like me still go over there. They still flame the videos. They still <laughs> down votes on videos that people are like, <laughs> It's funny, I love that channel, and the reason I love it is because every time I put out a review, people are like, wow, this review is really good, why the hell are people downvoting it? And then someone else inevitably will always respond, because there's a group of a couple hundred little fucking morons who follow Phil around no matter what, no matter where he is, no matter what he does, to basically give him negativity because they basically have no validation of their own lives, no... positivity in their own lives and so they have to try to bring him down because that's how they get some kind of worth out of their existence it's ridiculous but it's true so even if i got rid of the king of hate moniker yeah and... because no one can't dislike a channel for genuine reasons though no, they're all fucking bullies if you get a dislike on your video that means uh you're that you got bullied guys uh you know so my videos on this channel have some dislikes man my life is so hard they're just bullies, guys. If Brandon started over, I don't think it would matter. Because these people would still fucking follow me like fleas. And they would just jump on my back to keep doing biting me and do stupid negative shit. Dude, so he, is, he is so salty that he is... That making a new channel does not, uh, you know... He's, because I remember when he when he pitched Keo Gaming to everyone, he was like, oh, when I open the, this new uh, channel, it's going to get no hate, no negativity, it's not going to be associated with me, and this and that. And then when he opened it, like, he was, he got so fucking pissed that it didn't work out. He tried to revise what he said, because he said originally that people who go to Keo Gaming would not know it's Phil or whatever, they'll be able to, to uh, you know, uh, enjoy over that. Whatever. People were like, yeah, but you're going to use your voice. So, like, everyone's going to know where the gameplay com comes from because it's from DSP Gaming and so on and so forth. But then, but he's like, oh, but then after he's, that didn't work, he was like, no, I didn't say that. I said that the, that, uh, it would not be in a negative situation. It's like, yeah, but like, 
if it's from you and people don't like you, they're not going to be like, oh, Phil made a new channel. Okay, well, I have to ha go with a clean slate. I have to, like, you know, no, 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 no. If people don't like you, they don't like you. If people don't like, you know, if they don't like my, if they'll say that people, you know, there are people who don't like my videos or, or me or whatever, they're not going to go to Theo Does Videos and be like, wow, guys, Theo's a really cool guy, let me tell you. Like, no, they're going to be like, yeah, you know, you do these kind of videos, whatever, that's cool and all, but, like, you know, I don't like you for that the, that channel and those kind of videos for this reason and whatever. I'm not going to say, like, what? What do you mean by that? Uh, Theo Does Videos is completely different. How can you, you know, move the hate from this channel to the other? Like, like that, that's not how it works, you fucking... Matter, in my opinion, at this, at this point, the King of Hate moniker has been such part of my branding and a part of everything for so long that I don't think that it's going to affect... And the bottom line is, here's the other thing, too. You'd be funny... You, You'd think that with that moniker, I wouldn't have companies like Loot Crate. I wouldn't have companies like Teespring. I wouldn't have companies like, just recently I got contacted by this new company called 1UP. Teespring doesn't give a fuck because, well, first off, your Teespring link is DSP Gaming. It's not the King of Hate or anything. And they honestly probably don't give a fuck because you're, you're giving them traffic. They don't, they don't care, Phil. Anyone can get a Loot Crate subscription if they pull in enough views. You happen to pull in the minimal amount, probably somewhere between the minimal or, or you know, whatever, to get these these uh, partnerships. You're not you're not a special person, Phil. Box. They're very similar to Loot Crate, only their their box is always about gaming, video games, and gaming. And they want me in the partnership, and they just sign me up to be part of their partnership. Where once a month I'm going to get their box, I'm going to unbox it, and if people like it, they could use a referral link to to say, get, save some money on on a you know a, their own subscription, and I get a little bit of referral credit for it. You would think. The king of hate wouldn't get these offers. But people don't care. People realize now I'm an established brand. I've been on the internet for over eight years as Dark Side Phil, as DSP Gaming, and as the king of hate. They don't care. So they care. realize there's some kind of name notoriety. And when I make a video regardless of what they don't care who you are. Views, right? It's going to get some kind of attention and it'll get me advertising for the companies. So they don't care about that shit anymore. It's I could see, you know, if I was a brand new YouTuber in this day and age with all the SJWs and shit out there. Oh my God, the king of hate. This guy's a fucking racist and blah, blah, blah. But I've been around for so long that if you're an intelligent adult... No! No, no, okay, look, look. Everyone is probably going to say, Yeah, SJWs are like that. N no, no, if you, if, if anyone made a YouTube channel, let's say they call it the King of Hate or whatever, and they upload videos, nothing but offensive shit that, or like stuff that can, that's very like, or edgy and like, you know, whatever, then they're probably going to like, call you down, but... Look at this channel. Look at the videos he uploads. I don't think an SGW would be that pissed off. If anything, they'd be more pissed off with how he talks about, like, transgender people and back when on that whole thing. We don't really have to get into that. Um, uh, there, there, was, there was something else that he said that, that I was like, I was like, oh, this, oh, in, uh, this KO Gaming review, he mentions fucking, um, <laughs> He mentions uh, trisexuals or something. I was like, that. that's something that, that, that can definitely fucking trigger, uh, uh, SJWs. You can figure out that that's not something negative. That is actually a Whatever. positive reinforcement name. Um, and the <laughs> bottom line is, you can't. I, I already said this. You can't help stupid. There's always going to be a mass of stupid people who don't want to do the time to figure out what the hell you were about or who Man, you are. This and they question. just want to believe the common nonsense and the common drama opinion. And I don't think that changing my name to anything else is ever going to fix that. I think that they're going to be stupid no matter what. He talked about this for nine minutes. Okay. Next to question. that water. This one is from. Anthony77FX, and he says, Phil, this is actually a question that I've been wanting to ask you for a while. Why do you think it is that the hardcore gaming season is usually in the fall and winter? Oh, Why don't many go. game developers and publishers release their games during the summertime? For myself, it seems like a logical way of selling and promoting their titles, since most people are off from school and work and usually have a lot more available free time during this period. Over the years, you've stated that the summer is always a dead time for gaming, since hardly any new releases are ever coming out at that time. I completely agree, and I still don't understand why most new games aren't coming out during the summer and instead come out during the fall. Keep up the good work and stay strong. All right, so let me, let me, I'm going to read this myself, and then I'll answer the question. Why, by the way, thank you, Richter Tryhard, for that question. That was a crazy question. Uh, why, why do, why do so many game developers, publishers release their games in the fall, winter, instead of the summer when people have far more free time? Well, very easy, my friend. During the summer, when you're a kid, what does your parents like to do a lot? 
they like to go on vacation. Now, reasonably, fair enough that, you know, they, no one goes on vacation for months at a time. I mean, no one goes for like a whole month or like two months or whatever during the summer on vacation. Fair enough. But, uh, you know, you, you can't time these releases very well. And, they don't, and, you know, you don't know... Excuse me. You don't know how, like, when people are going to go on vacation. So you don't know when exactly is it you're going to get the, the most sales possible. You, you might you might get good sales over the summer, sure, but like the reason why movies do a lot well in the summertime is because movies are everywhere. You can go you you, you can go anywhere for movies. Video games you you would have to bring the console with you. You have to hope that the TV there allows you to be connected. All this kind of stuff if you go out a lot. But a lot of people like to go out in the summertime as well. It's it's very tricky. You can't get a perfect. Um, you don't get great sales that way. So they pick fall and winter because. You know, it's closer to the holiday, and there's a lot of traffic with Black Friday. There's a lot of traffic, uh, you know, in the holiday season. Consistently. Consistently. That never, that never changes. No matter who you are, you're in that whole rush. I know why. There's actually two different reasons why, Anthony. Um, the first is a very matter-of-fact one. Financials. A lot of companies Financials. have fiscal years that end at a certain time, or the way they, they do their books or their financials. They need to have a certain big influx of income by a certain period. So for them to have the games that are the biggest releases released during a certain period of time and they see that big influx in the financials allows them to do their finances or their accounting a certain way, okay? A certain Sadly, way. that's not really the commonplace answer anymore. I do know that that did affect some companies at one point. Here's the truth of the matter in the modern era. In the modern gaming era, the reason that these companies do it is because of the holiday season. These game developers and game publishers see the holiday season of November and December as a cash cow. They know that typically during those months, children receive Christmas presents. And they know that parents usually shell out tons of money to... Christmas is not a kid-only holiday, by the way. Fun fact. I them said presents. <laughs> so... The way that they see it is, let me get my game in between the months of September to December so we can promote it for the holiday season as a, you know, a good game to buy for your kids for Christmas and we'll artificially inflate our sales. And I'm going to throw that out there because that is the truth of it. How is that artificially inflating your sales? Because the thing is that they're selling it there because you get really, you, you line your birds up basically with that. You line your, your targets up for them to, to buy your shit. Because not only will you get the parent that will buy the, the gift for their parent, for their kid, you get people that are like, I've been waiting for this game, I'm out, I'm gonna buy it. And that's what they usually do. That's why they go out during the fall time, during during the season. Regardless, they, it, it's to get, like, you know, both people who are adults that want to get the game and people who want to buy their game for uh, for their kids. It, it, it's just, it's it's perfect unison, and the thing is that it's like, well, it artificially inflates their sales, but, like, they they would get that same amount of sales regardless of when they sell it. It's just, here, it's more probable because there'll be more in their minds during that holiday time, during that holiday rush. They'll be like, Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Call of Duty, gotta get a Call of Duty, oh, Battlefield, Battlefield. It, it's very fucking simple. It, it's just, it's it's to, to get everyone to buy their game. <laughs> artificially inflating sales if you're banking on a holiday to be the reason why your game sells instead of making a good game that's the bottom line that if you make that's a the good bottom game, line you could release it on january 1st you could release it on april 1st you could release it on july 1st you could release it on christmas fucking day it doesn't matter when you release it christmas day you want to release a game the day of christmas um okay if you make a good game People will buy it because word of mouth will spread that it's good and people will buy it and play it and it'll be successful. How many games have we seen that we didn't expect were going to be good then all of a sudden they ended up being really good and they get, became bestsellers? I'll give you a perfect example of this. Doom last year. Doom in 2016. Oh, he loves that Doom. He he fucking, he will get bend down, bend down, the, the, bend down on his knees to fucking suck Doom's dick, man. He loves Doom. A lot of people wrote this game <laughs> off. They saw the previews. <laughs> In the videos, they said this game looks like it's going to be too much of a throwback. It's probably not going to be fun. They wrote the game off. And by the way, Bethesda did not send out advanced copies of this game at all for review purposes. So again, now the media slandered it. Oh, this game's probably going to suck because that's why they didn't send out review games because it sucks. Do no, no, no. No one said it sucks. It's just people were very skeptical because it's like... Because 
it's like they want to hide something. But I think that's that's a that, it, it's silly where we've gone because a lot of people used to shit on early reviews. Remember, like remember the, there was a there was a period in time back when G Four TV was around where people were like saying like oh early reviews are are just bought reviews and they're not fair they're not genuine because it's they're 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 paid for they're not they're not genuine um, reviews because you know they they want to make their their uh, you know, the people who give them the free games happy, they you know, whatever. Now it's like, now people are like, oh, well, review, early reviews are fine now, and they, it's it's just weird in that regard. I, I think, honestly, it shouldn't matter either way, but I, I, I think uh, them wanting to not give early reviews is fine, in my opinion. In my opinion, but whatever. It ended up being one of the best games of 2016. <sighs> the game was successful, it sold like crazy because of word of mouth that the game was good. You want to know when that game was released? Was it released during the holiday season? No, it was released in early May, okay? If anything, the track record shows it doesn't fucking matter when you release your game. If you have a good game and you release it, it's going to sell. The problem is, a lot of these game developers don't make good games. They make dialed in, phoned in, fucking rushed out, incomplete, non-play tested, one a year installment fucking games that aren't very good, and they rely on the holiday season as the way to sell their game so if you're putting out a subpar game and you know there's a ton of competition advertise the fuck out of your game during october through december and hope that the kids will ask for it for christmas so you'll get artificially inflated sales just think about how stupid that is as a sale it's so stupid when people go out and try to sell their game and release it in, in the busiest time of the year and get and, and they and they get paid for it and it works it's so, they're so fucking stupid mentality right us the gamers, we know, we see through that shit and we're like, that is so stupid. But they literally go to school and learn this shit as marketing. They think that this is clever marketing, right? It, it, when it in reality, is. all it is is artificial and it doesn't last. It lasts long enough for them to make money. Take a sip so, through the water. The bottom line so, is, and this is the truth. I said the bottom line again, by the way. The bottom line is, this the bottom is the line. truth of the matter, is Ultimately. that they think of gaming still... As something primarily for kids. Even. Fuck off. With that. Yeah, he's a real gamer, guys. Oh, they think games are for kids. Um, they're, they are for kids. Video games are for kids, for adults, for everyone. Video games are for everyone, Phil. Oh, all research data <laughs> in the past several years, 10 years, has shown overwhelmingly that video games are now the most profitable entertainment industry above television, movies, and music, that primarily now the main purchasers of video games are adults. All the data shows this. Yeah, because kids were running out to buy games all the time, right? In the past, right, guys? No, no. Adults were always buying video games. Phil, Phil... Come on, if you had a kid, if you had a kid, let's let's pretend, let's have a nightmare, guys, and and say that Phil has a kid. Who's gonna be buying uh, DSP Junior his video games? Okay, the increasingly adult-oriented games and ga games with more adult themes are becoming more and more profitable, and the kitty games, you know, the games that used to be Nintendo games or whatever, are actually not as profitable as they used to be. They still treat the gaming industry like children. So they think, oh, well, video games are for kids. And therefore, when are kids going to buy more games or want more games during the holiday season for as a Christmas present? So release all the games at the end of the year. That's the truth. Yeah, okay, yeah, because adults don't, can't, you know, go get the game. As well. Again, as I said, it's to get both to uh, get everyone to buy their game. They're getting kids to want it for Christmas. And then the people who are going to buy it regardless... Are also gonna buy it, so they get double money. Basically, technically, they get every they get everything they ever asked by releasing it there. So not only do they release it, you know, for people to get for the Christmas gift, and by the way, again, Christmas gifts are not a child only thing. Adults can get them too, but like, uh, they're that stupid. They're that fucking stupid. Yeah, it's so stupid, guys. Guys, get this. You're you're an idiot if you if you disagree with this. No, you're an idiot if you agree with this. You release a game during the holiday season for both. Actually, no, I've said this multiple times. Did not you get outside it. the box and realize <laughs> that keep laboring the points. Good game that adults will spread the word uh, that game is good and it will be popular. No I'm, matter sorry. What. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
So they I'm have to rely on guys. these cheap tactics. Oh, I gotta sell it during the end of the year. We gotta release a game and claim with our million dollar marketing budget uh, that it's gonna totally revolutionize the way that you ever play games. And then you buy the game and it's like, what the fuck is this? It's a rehashed version of, of this game combined with this game and it doesn't feel like anything original at all. Their whole marketing campaign was false advertising. That's what I mean. It's stupid. They are banking on artificially inflated sales at the end of the year. And the truth of the matter is it works. Because, yeah, there are kids who run out there, oh, Mom, I want the Call of Duties, or I want the Grand Theft Autos, or I want this hot game, whatever the hot game is. Grand Theft Autos, right? yeah, because that's and a that yearly really series. Get extra sales at the end of the year. Um, and let's face it, let's take it for another example here. Doom. It sold in May, right? Okay. Why do you look at the May? In May, full retail price. Calendar. By the end of the year, that game was old. And anyone who really wanted to play it already had, but there's some people who were holdouts, so they bought it at Christmas as a discount, because by then it was a half price, right? So, if you don't release your game during the holiday season, even if you still get additional sales at the end of the year, typically you don't make a lot of money, because your game is now being sold at a discounted rate, because it's older. There you go, Phil. But that's dumb. That's dumb to get more money. So so stupid, right, guys? I wish you take Phil's word for that, because he, 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 we know him. He, he is all about that, uh, you know, okay with getting less money, right? So, these game developers slash Gulf. production companies slash marketing companies see it as a lost opportunity to make artificial money from releasing your game at a certain time of the year. The bottom line, I said it again, I, I, I'm really noticing myself saying bottom line a lot now. Holy fuck. I gotta you see a lot of things. Some, some missuggestions of something that I should say instead of bottom line. And I will start saying silly things instead of bottom line, mm. okay? Um... If these game developers released good games during the summer, they would sell. Those games would sell. They would. The problem is they don't. They're so deathly afraid that they're going to put tons of money and time investment into a game, considering maybe even a AAA release, release it during the summertime, and because all the marketers of the past 10 to 20 years have told them the summer is a horrible time to release video games, that the game won't sell. I completely disagree. I think that this would be a great time. I do believe if a... Triple A game company put out a great game during the summertime that it would actually be a bestseller. I firmly believe it because, as you've said, uh, Anthony, Anthony, kids and adults typically have more free time during the summer months. It's a slower time for business overall because there's no holidays to artificially inflate business. So I really do feel that it would actually be a better time. Um, I think it might also um, be kind of the jock mentality. And what I mean by that is, the, again, these marketing companies feel summertime. The jock mentality. Let's hear this. Time to go outside and do outdoorsy activities because it's warmer. You're going to go camping. You're going to go play sports. You're going to go on a boat and go swimming. And you're going to go to the beach. You're not going to want to sit at home and play video games. When in reality, what we've seen, again, doing market research, people are doing less and less physical activities like that now and are more towards... Where Where is the study? Where, what study is this? An inclusive lifestyle because now social activity takes place on the internet, not in person. And I know that's... What? Dude, dude, I went to a party last weekend. I went to a party last weekend. And that party was not online. It was in person. We had a grill, it was a grill, it was a barbecue, it was great. It was a great, uh, great party. But I guess I guess Phil is right. It was it was actually a cyber party. Ad, but that's the truth. If you look at market data, <laughs> okay. that's what you'll find. Yeah. So I you this know. fucking guy, he's like going off the like general like stereotype of Ugh, kids these days. They're always on their phones, guys. Can't believe it. Fucking Pokemon Go is just another way to enslave humanity on phones, guys. Can you fucking believe that? Let's let's fight against technology, dude, man. Fucking technology. All the data points towards the fact that if you just make a good game, it doesn't matter when you release it, it'll sell. Yet these idiots are still in this old school mentality that if we release a game during the end of the year, it's going to sell more. And it won't. They're just dumb. But It won't? But it, but why do they keep bringing in a lot of money then? What? Can't help stupid. Boy, we got a running theme for this month's Ask the King. You can't help stupid, can you? Yeah, yeah, we can. Um, I think we got time for one more question in this part before we take a break. The next question is from Daniels Wee. And he says, hey, Phil, I've heard you speak several times about Nintendo being idiots when it comes to YouTube and people. But he doesn't shit on developers. That guy's a fucking bully, Phil. Delete that question. Rip it up. Say, no bullies allowed. You're spreading misinformation if you say that I fucking shit on Nintendo and call them idiots. You're, what a fucking slanderous question, Phil. I can't believe you took that question. In your games. 
Here's to my qu- here's my question. Since wow. you're a very good speaker and you explain everything thoroughly and well, <laughs> yeah, he's a great a speaker. About the whole Nintendo and YouTube situation and explained that it is in fact illegal to do what they're doing. Hopefully that illegal, will be yeah. viral and perhaps Nintendo would realize how stupid they are when they steal from YouTubers who advertise their games for free. Maybe some huge YouTubers would even end up suing Nintendo if they're too stubborn to change. Thank you. Yeah, that, that that's going to happen. So let's read the question and I'll I'll answer it in my own way. Uh oh, here we go. Why doesn't you uh why doesn't a huge YouTuber why doesn't oh my god why doesn't a huge YouTube <laughs> if you got the R you should have put an R there why do, why doesn't a huge YouTuber sue Nintendo to stop them from illegally claiming all all ad revenue on YouTube videos um uh, uh YouTube vi- uh, videos Jesus featuring their games this is an eye opener <laughs> what uh you a uh, big the big YouTubers are probably not going to sue Nintendo because they probably don't give a fuck. They probably are just like, yeah, okay. Because, like, they probably say, that sucks. It sucks that we can't do that. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and they move on. They they, they they act grown up about it. It's like, yeah, well, what can you do? Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, what Daniel is talking about is the fact that whenever you upload a gameplay video of Nintendo to the internet, on YouTube, whether it's raw gameplay, whether it's an actual edited video that's a review, no matter what kind of video you actually upload to YouTube, Nintendo will claim that video, saying that because you use their intellectual property to make that video, they own 100% advertisement revenue, they'll place an ad on that video and make money off of your video, all right? Oh, no. The bottom line, I said it again, fucking shit dicks. In reality, that's illegal. And that is true. It's illegal. Here's why. Even if Nintendo could make a legal co- court case and take it to court and say, well, that's our intellectual property that Phil used to make his video and therefore we own the ad revenue on it. The courts would say, well, that's not true. You didn't create the gameplay. You didn't create... You didn't create the gameplay? So so Nintendo did not make the the controls for, like you know, when you move the analog stick in a direction, the character moves in that direction uh, that they that Nintendo wants you to move. Uh, you know, Nintendo doesn't think they didn't program the ability to jump. They didn't program the ability to attack. They didn't program the ability to, you know, let's use Breath of the Wild. They did not. Nintendo and the studio that they that helped them did not create the open world for you to explore and to use their mechanics that they created in the game. I mean, like this, his argument would be more more sound. If he's talking about reviews, when people are like edit or edited playthrough or whatever, I can understand that. That's fine, but no. Like if let's say that Phil came over to to this channel and monetized this this video, I wouldn't give a fuck. I would say, well, you know what? I am watching Phil's video, and this is Phil's video. He can make money off it all he wants. I don't care because right now, obviously, I'm not making any money on it because it's not a monetized channel. It's not. So, there you go. I mean, it's like, he's not really editing his gameplays that m- at all. I mean, if he, again, if he was using his KO Gaming as a example, it would, it would make more sense, but... A transformative work, you didn't record the video, you didn't upload the video. At best, Nintendo owns a portion of the ad revenue on that video. Not all of it. And in particular, especially if someone's doing a game review, that is protected under fair use. That's protected on, as, I mean, review is criticism, you know, and that is legally protected by the United States. But th- this I don't play isn't, and th- this video is about Phil, uh, criticizing Phil, uh, Phil's videos, Phil's attitudes. That, that's not, that's not protected under fair use. Only, only when it's Phil's videos, it's court systems as something mm. you should be able to put on YouTube and Nintendo claims those videos too. It's illegal. It actually is 100% against the law to do it. Take a sip. But who is at fault here? Is it Nintendo? In truth, no. No? Now it's not Nintendo's fault? He spent years, years when when uh, Nintendo uh, placed this uh, monetization feature, he blamed Nintendo specifically, specifically about it. Now, oh, now it's YouTube. Now it's YouTube, guys. He is only blaming YouTube because he isn't making as much money on YouTube anymore. 
if he was making a lot of money on YouTube, he would still be blaming Nintendo. There's no way he 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 believed this from the start. He he is uh, he's full of it. He's fucking full of it. Nintendo's not at fault. Guess who's at fault? YouTube. Because YouTube created their content ID system, which actually is illegal. Ladies and gentlemen, every time- Yeah, it, it's illegal, even though it's in their terms of service. It's their fucking website. It's a private business that, yeah, it's open to the public to use, but it's owned by a company, a private company, and they have the right to institute rules and how things go about it. If this was a, you know... Again, if what YouTube is doing is illegal, the FCC probably, from my understanding of what the FCC does, probably would have shut down Google for it. They probably, well, not shut them down, but they would probably tell them to stop it, if that's the case. If a video gets claimed on YouTube for ad revenue, YouTube is breaking the law. That is the truth. And if anyone ever took it to court, YouTube has no legal defense. Then why hasn't anyone taken it to court? Why didn't the FCC stop them? Why didn't the government stop them if they're breaking the fucking law, Phil? A lot, there's a lot of sites that did break the law, and guess what happened to them? The FCC went after them. Like, look at, I think it was like, is it Napster? Or is it like, oh, uh, there's a lot of old piracy sites back in the 90s, you know, back when the internet was, was like young. Uh, back when I was in middle school, way back then, uh, we had these web uh, websites like Rocksteady. No, not Rocksteady. Oh, uh, god damn! Can't think of it. I think it had Rock in the name. Ah, uh, damn it! Someone, someone might have to correct me on that. But that's how used to, to be a site where you could go and download music. And guess what happened? The FCC went after them because it, that was illegal. If YouTube is doing something illegal, the FCC would ha would have stepped in and said, "No, you cannot do this, uh, YouTube." But Yes, he hasn't done it. Because whenever you put a video on YouTube, you immediately own the copyright. Whenever you create something like that, you own the intellectual property and the copyright. That's not how copyright works, though. You ha don't, don't you have to go to, like, a, a office to, to file a, for copyright? You don't just get copyright just by uploading a video, but whatever. It's actually U.S. law that in the, that's the case, okay? When you Where's upload the law? YouTube, you own that right. And therefore, Cite you retain it. advertisement rights, you retain everything to it. Unless that video is deemed to have copywritten content from another creator. Copywritten content. The content ID system is supposed to automatically flag and or match said content and assign advertisement revenue to the appropriate party. But guess what? That party doesn't own 100% advertisement revenue. Because if you made a transformative work that's protected under fair use law, you own at least a portion of it, okay? But your playthroughs... Again, as I said, his playthroughs are basically generally not enough to be fair use. If that's fair use, then this is fair. This is like 100% fair use, and I should be able to to make money off these videos, which I don't think I I just I don't agree with that because I barely did anything with these videos. These are just raw videos that I'm just pausing, playing, start record, stop record. I don't think this is anything special. If I did like a fancy montage or something. Okay, you know, whatever, but uh, uh, it's just whatever. It... So every single video uh, ever on YouTube that's been content like ID claimed and ever that. who's been taken or given to someone else is illegal. There's no legal precedent for that to take place. The only reason YouTube's able to do it is because no one's taken them to court. And also, let's face it, no one's ever going uh. to court to prove that a let's play is a legal video either. No one's ever going to, court, going to court about a review that's been put on YouTube and said that that was protected by fair use. No one's ever gone to court. Because you can usually appeal the claim and some and sometimes the company will be like, okay, whatever, it's fair use. Sometimes they don't, but like, no one wants to go to court, Phil. Do you want, you want to know why no one's ever gone to court? Because here's the chances are, if you went to court, and you said, I'm going to sue YouTube for this illegal system, YouTube would say, okay, well, guess what? In our bylaws that you sign whenever you create a new channel, it says that we can get rid of you for whatever reason we deem possible for the protection of our own business. Therefore, fuck you. You're banned from YouTube. And he I really doubt that's in their terms of service. So he's really basing this on, like, no research at all. But if we slandered him... Or saying the same thing, like, oh, what do you go to is, is Chad. He reserves the right to ban you whenever he feels like it. He's like, no, that's not the case. You know, if you win the court case, what's the point of winning it? Because you can't upload YouTube videos anymore. Uh, you'll get millions of dollars. Or 
That's why it's never gone to court, folks. Um, yeah, that's the bottom. That's I said the bottom line again. Oh my God, boy, is this fucking self-aware? I'm saying it again. That's the truth of the matter. Is that no one's ever going to sue you two because if they do, they need to have another way to make money. Now, they can't make money from uh, from the lawsuit, Phil. Maybe. Let's say, for example, there was someone who was big on YouTube, but also they were big on Twitch. They were making money from Twitch. They had a Patreon that could support them. They were selling products like Teespring. Let's say that there was someone who was... Like him! He's he's big on Twitch, and he has a Patreon that, support, that supports him, and he has Teespring. He, he should take him to court. He has every, like... Millions of dollars doing this, all right? And YouTube at revenue was one portion of that, that they could that. actually afford to risk. That person or business could sue YouTube, and even if YouTube gave them the boot, they could say, well, fuck you, I don't care, I'm doing this on principle, so that other people don't get fucked in the future. So someone literally would have to sue YouTube on a principle, knowing well, farewell, they're probably going to get banned from the website. What are the chances you're going to see someone go through years of court battling against Google to do that? That's why we haven't seen anything happen. Even though content IDs auto match Auto claim system is completely and utterly illegal. No one will ever sue YouTube for it because they don't want to get kicked off the site. They have to keep making money on the website, right? Right. Take a sip. Chew the water. You would really need some like really rich eccentric dude to do it. Who's just going to do it on principle. Um, you Trump really get on it. Sue Nintendo. What you could do, you could try to get Nintendo to stop or you try to get them to stop again, guys. The system is owned by YouTube. So when you really go at fault, well, Nintendo submitted all their content to YouTube and said, please make sure that no one uses our content illegally, or if they do, that we get ad revenue from it. It's up to YouTube to determine the fair share, and YouTube doesn't determine the fair share. They take it all. So, again, the, the actual law-breaking is YouTube, not Nintendo. So, like, let's say that we get Nintendo to, to, to fucking stop completely, and they're like, okay, we see that we fucked up. We will discontinue this, this thing with YouTube. So if the, so, you're saying so. Phil's saying that if Nintendo asked YouTube, "Hey, YouTube, can you like remove us from from this thing that we said? We don't want to do it anymore." They're gonna be like, "No, no, 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 Nintendo, you must keep on this path. You got, you got it, you got it. You, you signed the deal with the devil. You got, you got it. You got to keep this program going until you fucking die, Nintendo. You're you're in it for life. Like no, no, if Nintendo wants to uh, ease up. YouTube is gonna be like, okay, sure." <laughs> now, Nintendo is morally at fault because no other company really does this besides music companies. Blanket claims shit like that. Well, you mentioned, I think, so I think it might, might be in the next part because I heard about this from Dragon Killer, but he said he was afraid to do Silent Hill because of Konami. So I guess Konami's a music company now. On YouTube. Nintendo is completely out of line with their fan base. They're out of line with internet culture. They don't understand yeah, sure. that this is free advertisement for them. And but guys, he does not shit on developers. He doesn't. They would actually be more popular if they were more gamer friendly and more gamer centric rather than bottom line centric, okay? Um, I, I wish Phil was, you know, more in touch with his fans and his viewers and not bottom line uh, money centric. I really wish he wasn't like that, but. What can I do? He he won't stop. I guess YouTube made him this way. Um, but that's Nintendo's problem. They're a xenophobic company. They believe Phil's that a, their inclusive culture. Phil is a xenophobic YouTube, uh, Twitch streamer, and he and he thinks that his Phil culture is the best culture. Nintendo culture is better than the culture of everyone else outside of the company. <laughs> Nintendo they culture. Everyone else, and therefore, if they create something, it's ultimately theirs. It's not actually successful because of the the, the gamers or the purchasers, the customers. As I said, he's like trying to like latch onto this debate with uh like this japanese culture and versus like western culture that kind of stuff he's trying to latch his own fucking thing there and and it it's it, no well because their genius is and they thought up a great idea which is preposterous that's like me saying i'm here on youtube making a living doing this only because of me and not because of the amazing support of the viewers and the fans and those who've come out and given me ideas and helped me over hold on hold on we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go on a Little field trip, guys. Actually, no. Hold on. This will this will be this will be better. Okay, this will be better. It'll be nice and short. Uh, it's gonna be a nice clip if this loads. Uh, I know this is dead air, but but remember what he just said, guys. Remember. Remember, he said that. Uh,
uh, that it's because that he doesn't take responsibility. I uh, you know he he won't say it's because of me. It's because of you, the people. Okay. Is this is this it? Come on. Oh my God. Twitter, you're, you're fucking me, man. Twitter. Uh oh. I don't like this. I don't. I don't like the look of this. Uh. Oh my God. Oh God. Dude. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay, good. All right. Remember this. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, fucking... What the fuck? Oh my god. Wow. Twitter fucking died. Thank you. thanks Twitter. Twitter World Order. Uh Hmm. I gotta do it the long way because fuck uh just playing a fucking clip. Okay, what Where... With that passive aggressive message, they said, We recommend you sh sh as a contact of the dude, all right. To wasn't going outside. Oh my god, come on. Uh, I'm, I'm really losing my patience now with this because, like, I had it and then Twitter fucked me and Twitter might fuck me again. Let's try this. Again, if this uh, this is the last this is I promise you I promise you this is this is the last fucking time we, I do this. If if I can't get it to fucking work as it should, I'll move on and I'll and I'll tell you I'll tell you it's that fucking uh oh my god please 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 <laughs> Just, all right me. Re, I'm the one who puts out the content that's entertaining and has a fan base. Me. Airs. It's not actually successful because of the, the the gamers or the purchasers, the customers. It's successful because they're geniuses and they thought up a great idea, which is preposterous. That's like me saying, I'm here on YouTube making a living doing this only because of me and not because of the amazing support of the viewers and the fans and those who've come out and given me ideas and helped me over the years. That would be so fucking ridiculous and so egotistical and... Re, I'm the one who puts out the content that's entertaining and has a fan base. Me. Re, I'm the one who puts out the content that's entertaining and has a fan base. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like look, he's like, oh man, this is egotistical. He said in a fucking video, oh well, um, let me, let me tell you, that, that's egotistical and bullshit. He fucking said that not even a week ago. I think it's, oh, I don't know, I think it was a week ago, actually. It was last week he uploaded that vid. So self-centered, and that's what you, that's what Nintendo is. That's, that's why, why Nintendo does that, okay? That's why they do it. So, I could say, told him blue in the face, that Nintendo is bad, bad, bad. But ultimately, it actually ultimately the of YouTube to not be doing the wrong thing. And they're not showing any signs of changing because they're not getting sued. In fact, just take a look at the current situation now at YouTube ad revenue. How many years did YouTube have ads? 10? Okay. 10 fucking years. YouTube never had a system by which advertisers can actually make sure that their ads are being shown to people who are going to be part of the customer base that they want or they're trying to reach. Their ads are being shown on racist videos, on terrorism videos, ads for fucking life insurance and tampons were being shown to small children. You see what I mean? Uh, when I was a kid and I was watching Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, there were tampon ads on those channels. So I, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, fucking TV starts, started this. YouTube never even had that fucking system in place. It was only until 250 major advertisers said, fuck you, and pulled all their advertisements from the website that now all of a sudden YouTube realizes we got to fix this, right? That's how YouTube is. It's create everything and throw it out there to make money, money, money now. Oh shit, if something goes wrong, we'll fix it afterward. They're not proactive, they're reactive. 
They only react when things go wrong. They don't proactively do anything to prevent problems. Because so why didn't you proactively prevent problems with your own business, Phil? You know, you, you had the copyright strikes. Why didn't you proactively do something about it? Why didn't you put in a, a system in place to, to uh, prevent your business from declining? Why didn't you proactively try to fix your, your uh, partnership issues? Oh, well. Huh. They're short-sighted and they're not smart. So that's the bottom line. I said it again, the bottom line. Motherfuck, I can't believe I said it. I must have said it at least seven times, at least in this video. That's the deal with this whole thing. Nintendo is at fault, morally, but it's really on YouTube, and no one's going to sue YouTube. And YouTube's not going to change until they're forced to, so until someone actually decides, I don't want to do YouTube anymore, I'll sue them on principle, nothing's ever going to change. Nothing will change. Alright, we got one more part left for Ask the King. I believe we've got one, two, three, four, five, and about eight questions left, and most of them are actually are shorter questions, so it shouldn't take too long to get through them. Um, so I hope you'll come back for part three, the final part of this April 27 episode of April 27. April 2017 episode of Ask the King. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll be back shortly with the conclusion, and I'll see you then. All right. And he adds the uh, the break, because that, that makes sense. All right, ladies and gents. That's it for this vid. I know there was a lot of technical issues, but that, that won't happen again. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next part, the final part.